Hello everybody, this is Tim here again. I uh, figured I'd go ahead and do another movie review. This time for the uh, remake of Death Wish starring Bruce Willis and directed by Eli Roth. Sorry about that lighting there. But yeah, direct, uh, directed by Eli Roth. Now, um, the original Death Wish I do enjoy. I actually, Death Wish 3 is my favorite. If you've ever seen it, you know what, you know what I'm talking about. It's like so freaking over the top. It's just hysterical. Um, this remake of Death Wish, though, I'll just go ahead and say I'd give it a zero from one to four. I thought I thought it was crap. I thought it was crap. I know the movie's been getting bad reviews, and some of the bad reviews have been unjustly. They've just been kind of attacking the movie for being like pro gun and all that shit. And that eh, stupid. Uh, when I judge a movie, I judge a movie. I don't let politics come into it. I didn't like this film simply because I didn't like the film. It has nothing to do with pro gun or anti gun. I'm for the right to bear arms, though, just to put that out there. Uh, I do believe every person should have the right to protect themselves, um, as long as they're protecting themselves and not, you know, breaking the law. But uh, anyway, as far as this movie goes, it's pretty much the same step as the original. Uh, Bruce Willis's family gets attacked. Um, his wife gets killed. His daughter survives, but she's in a coma through the film, which was interesting. In the original film, one of the attackers was actually Jeff freaking Goldblum, and his, fa his family was, like, brutally raped. Uh, his wife and daughter were. He was, like, real hardcore. Like, uh, I'm kind of glad they didn't do it here, but the attack in the original was much more vicious and made you root much more for the bastards to be, you know, gunned down. In the original film, though, he never actually finds the people who did it. He doesn't even search for them, doesn't even try, which that was one of the flaws in the original film for me. They doesn't even try to find them. Here, they kind of fix that, but at the same time, they kind of forget about it. For most of the movie, Bruce Willis is just, like, going off and just, like, off in random criminals. Um, and he just, it kind of seems like he even forgets about the people who hurt his family. Later on in the movie, though, he finds, like, one of the guys who was in on it, like, shows up at the hospital, and he has Bruce Willis' watch on. And that's how Bruce Willis finds out, you know, uh, where the dudes are, because he traces, you know, the dude's cell phone that he has back to the other guys. And, but that right there throws off the dynamic, because when it comes to a revenge movie like this, right, they gotta get you to root for the dude doing vigilante justice. You know, they got to make it feel, make you feel like, you know, he's doing the right thing in some way, shape, or form. That this is his only way he can solve this incident. But the problem is, is they set it up to where the cops are legitimately trying to find what's wrong. Or find the criminals, but they can't. But then they just have uh, this guy randomly show up at the hospital, you know, where Bruce Willis can just get all the information. Even if Bruce Willis hadn't started killing in the film... The cops still would have found the people because this dude still would have showed up in the hospital anyway and the cops would have traced his shit anyway because Bruce Willis would have been the doctor and he could have just showed him his watch and reported it. So no matter what, they would, the cops would have legitimately found the dude without the vigilante justice. It feels like the film's trying to have it both ways. Like it's trying to show that, uh, yeah, root for Bruce Willis to do this, but uh, you know, here the cops would have solved the problem anyway. It's kind of like it's trying to have it both ways, but at the same time, it's not doing a good enough job writing-wise to to please either side of the argument. Um, Bruce Willis's brother in the film is played by Vincent D'Onofrio. He's a great actor. He does good here, but he's like off and on in the film. He just disappears for like long freaking sections of the movie for like no reason. He just vanishes. We're to a point where you like forget he's even in the movie, and he just randomly shows back up. I like the character, but he adds literally nothing. You get to the end of the film, uh, some of the death scenes, like, the movie tries to be serious, but when Bruce Willis, like, kills one of the dudes, like, he causes a bowling ball to fall on the guy's head, and it's, like, really comical, it doesn't mesh with the tone of the film. And later on, at the end of the film, like, he kills this one, well, not at the end of the film, but partly about halfway through it, he kills this one guy with a jack, and he's like, I'm not gonna kill you, but Jack is. And it's like, ugh. It's just campy one-liners that just don't, like, mesh well with the, the serious story they're trying to tell here. You get to the end of the film, Bruce Willis' daughter wakes up from her coma. Once she wakes up, Bruce, was, Bruce Willis is like, I'm going to be a father to her. I'm ending this vigilante stuff. Uh, so you get the idea that, you know, he's kind of over it. He's going to go back to being, you know, the dad. Um, they, they try to set up at the beginning to show you, like, he's kind of passive-aggressive. Like, this guy starts up with him, and he doesn't, you know, fight him. He, he walks away. He does the right thing. But uh, they try to set that up as a character arc for him. But Bruce Willis, this is his, one of, this is his best performance in years. But he's, he's hit and miss in this. He sleepwalks for most of the beginning, and I was just really bored with his performance. Just bad line deliveries. Um, and then, But later on, towards the middle of the movie, he starts livening up and acting, you know, trying harder. But then partway through it, halfway, I mean, close to the end, he starts acting shitty again. When he's good in the film, he's good. But when he's bad, he is low. His lows are low as hell in this film. He's bad at certain spots, really bad. So in a way, it's a hit or miss performance, but at the same time, the lows are so low that it comes off really bad. Probably even worse than what it actually is. Um, we get to the end of the film. Yeah, he wants to be a dad for his daughter, which is cool and makes sense. But uh, like the 
the criminal guy, the last dude, like, comes after Bruce Willis. And Bruce Willis takes the guy out. And you think Bruce Willis's character would have a better plan. Like, he knows the dude's coming. And it seems like he's kind of surprised the guy shows up. But at the same time, you would think he would have a better plan for when the dude gets there. But anyway, he gets, he gets, he gets there. Bruce Willis takes him out, plus two more goons that came with him. Some okay action there, not anything to like write home about or blow your mind over, but it was okay. They tried to make the, they got to get they tried to give the film a realistic view by having like these different like talk shows and stuff like that in real life, like talk about the Bruce Willis character and everything. They like call him the Reaper. That was kind of neat. I like that approach, but at the same time, these guys you can tell the lines they're reading are scripted, and because they're not actors, their acting comes off terrible. But you might be able to forgive it because they're not actors, but at the same time, it's just so cringeworthy because you know they're trying to read scripted lines and it just ain't working. Uh, we get to the end. Uh, Bruce Willis is gave up the vigilante life. He's in another place. He's there with his daughter, and she's going off with this other girl to college, I guess. And she's fine. Uh, in the original film, the chick was like freaking catatonic and everything. But her violence in the original film was much worse than what we get, what she gets here. But uh, anyway, and uh, she's fine. But uh, Bruce Willis like has gave up the vigilante life, and he sees this one dude like trying to rob something and the dude takes off running and Bruce Willis like looks at him and says hey and the guy turns around he's like F you and Bruce Willis looks at him like with his fingers and cocks it like out like a gun that's the same thing uh, Charles Bronson did in the original film but uh, there it made sense because it never felt like Charles Bronson legitimately was going to give up the vigilante lifestyle here I never really bought into the fact that Bruce Willis's character would turn into a vigilante it never the character arc here it doesn't really work he takes like uh, one uh, one scene where he sees like his uh father-in-law like shoot down or shoot at some poachers and give a speech you know but uh that's pretty much it and it just later on he's just like i'm gun ho and he becomes an expert in like shooting and after like you know practicing like two or three times <laughs> that's a movie flaw i know it always happens but it's there but anyway uh, and so it doesn't really make sense with that kind of ending i felt like legitimately like this character probably would just give up being a vigilante and just not give a shit anymore but yeah, all in all, it's a zero star film out of four. I do not like this film. I did not like this film. I do not recommend it. Watch the original, or hell, even the Kevin Bacon one, Death Sentence, which was much better than this. I like that one. Uh, so I'll see you guys again with the next review.